Hello, I'm Judy Lee Troutman from Toledo, Ohio. I am the chair and co-founder of the Multifaith Council of Northwest Ohio. The Multifaith Council was formed January 1st, 2003, when, it, when the Multifaith activities were spun off from a parent organization. The original vision for the Multifaith Council was conceived by Woody Troutman, my late husband. In 2002, I agreed through a mutual friend to help Woody with web page development. When I met him four months later, I was so impressed with his dream that I offered to help. He then put me on every committee, whether they wanted me or not. We were married in a multi-faith wedding with representatives of eight faiths in March 2003. We developed this covenant for the habitat workshops that we developed for our first multi-faith habitat build. The covenant has remained a part of our vision and mission. I vow to consciously grow in the understanding and compassion that will encourage me to live peaceably with all of my neighbors. We have been an officially tax-exempt charitable organization since our founding in 2003. The vision and mission statements were revised at a strategic planning series of meetings in 2010. We are different from most of the interfaith multifaith groups I encountered while on the board of directors of the North American Interfaith Network in that we are lay-led, grassroots individuals, and mostly volunteer. We have some clergy members, but most of us are just ordinary folks who believe that we need to get along with our diverse neighbors. We now have two part-time contracted employees. Woody passed away at age 96 in August 2016. His last words for the community and for us were push on and we are. We build solidarity and community through three strands. We strive to draw together the diverse faith groups of Greater Toledo and Northwest Ohio in fellowship, education for increased understanding and mutual respect, and engaged collaborative community service. One of the formative activities for what was to become the Multifaith Council was a multifaith banquet that was held at the Hindu temple in 2001. The attendance was an astonishing 400 people. Woody's daughter tells a story that when she talked to him afterwards, he thought it was a failure because he couldn't get people to talk to those they didn't know. I have been part of all 17 banquets since. His usual comment after a banquet was, I didn't get to talk to everyone, and this would be 250, 300 people. Until he became less mobile, I had to take him to dinner after the banquet because he wouldn't eat. He would be going around talking to everyone. His mantra was, mingle and chat. That's the way we get to know one another in respect. Another of the founding activities in our early years were the multifaith habitat builds. Before we started building multifaith houses, Toledo had the first interfaith habitat build in the world, the Holy Toledo build in 2001. Muslims, Jews, and Christians participated in that build. A quad faith build followed when the Sylvania Baha'is joined. But Woody wanted to include all faiths, so we gathered eight to 12 faiths to build six Habitat for Humanity houses. We held workshops first to build community before building the houses. The workshops were led by the Reverend Ed Heilman and myself. Unfortunately, when the economy crashed in 2008, we were unable to continue raising the funds necessary to build the houses so we had to stop this program. So for community service, we turned to a study of ecology 
and care for the planet from the various faith traditions perspectives. From that study, we focused on local community gardening, which was flourishing at that time with Mike Saverla and Toledo Groves. We partnered with them to encourage the faith-based community gardens. At the height of the collaboration, there were about 120 local community gardens, of which about half were faith-based. These included many Christian churches, including the urban farm at the Sisters of St. Francis, and also gardens at B'nai Israel, Mashid Saad Foundation, Islamic Center of Greater Toledo, and the Hindu Temple. We held gardening workshops for information on things like hydroponics. We held garden tours and wonderful harvest festivals. The number of community gardens has dwindled, but there are still some remarkable ones, and the current pandemic is encouraging more people to think about our food sources. A newer faith-based garden concept has flourished in Toledo as a test site for the Sacred Grounds program of the National Wildlife Federation. This program encourages the planting of native plants, which attract pollinators. We did two art projects for local gardens funded by an Ohio Arts Council grant that involved children, the painting of pots, learning about pollinators, and the construction of beautiful benches and signage. The Multifaith Council has been supportive of this local initiative. The Toledo Lucas County Rain Garden Initiative has also encouraged natural stormwater management. And Sacred Grounds Toledo is a local partnership that has piloted this Sacred Grounds program in the Great Lakes area. From the beginning, the Multifaith Council was a part of the Erase the Hate Coalition. Our biggest contribution was the Erase the Hate Youth Projects, contests, festivals, and youth events. I chaired the Erase the Hate Coalition for four years, but I had to resign for lack of time in 2014. The coalition decided to fold the Erase the Hate coalition into our Compassionate Community Initiative. I believe I am proudest of our initiative to have Greater Toledo designated as a Compassionate Region, the first region in the Compassionate Cities Movement, spawned by Karen Armstrong's Charter for Compassion, published in 2009. In 2014, we had a grand celebration with signage at Government Center a compassion convention of 90 organizations doing compassionate work, followed by a banquet where Father Basic gave a brilliant keynote speech and Tom Williams of Compassionate Louisville welcomed us into the compassionate cities. During the process of gaining support for official designation as a compassionate community, we created the Heroes of Compassion to honor organizations and individuals in our community who are doing extraordinary compassionate action. The Heroes of Compassion 2020 have not been officially presented yet because of the pandemic. They will be soon. They include Baldemar Velasquez for his work with farm labor issues and flock the Reverend Michael Hank and Chef Stanley Smith for the community work that they do through Salem Lutheran Church, Amy Leguess, who has worked tirelessly with the Human Trafficking Coalition, and Peter Uvagi, who has had many roles in the city and supports refugees in an astounding way. The picture in the lower right hand corner is Martha Patu, who was one of our first Heroes of Compassion, and the plaque that we formed, which now resides at Government Center with the County Commissioner's Office. 
Since 2014, Compassionate Toledo has been a local team in the Compassion Games International. It's a fun way to highlight compassion in global communities. David Longacre, our Compassion Ambassador, engages individuals and organizations to report the number of volunteers, the number of volunteer hours, monies raised, if any, and the number of people served during the time window between 9-11 and 9-21. These numbers are tallied and sent to Compassion Games International. Each year we have been number one or two in at least two categories. Last year we were tops in the globe. It's a friendly competition, a co opetition really, and everyone wins. One of our compassionate community goals is to investigate critical issues that need compassionate attention. We have held many awareness raising forums. I've already mentioned the Compassion Convention that we had in 2014. We held forums on housing and homelessness for two years. We had a forum on constructive communication. Constructive communication is still very needed in our country. And we had a teach in on the Poor People's Campaign. We've also had a forum on opioid addiction. Last year was our fifth anniversary as a compassionate community. We went all out in November to celebrate with the Parliament of the Northwest Ohio Religions. We held nine events in five days. We had four luncheon faith site visits at various sacred sites in the Toledo area. In the evening, we opened with a compassion forum with keynote addresses and a panel of faith leaders. We had a children's universal worship. We had a forum on becoming a disability friendly city. And we closed with ethnic grazing and a forum on food sufficiency. But my favorite was the sacred music concert, which featured 11 different types of sacred music. It was recorded by Buckeye Cable and shown on Beacon Arts. It truly was a wonderful experience. Throughout the Parliament, we asked everyone to consider what their individual piece of peace was. We all can have a piece of peace. During one of the forums, a board member challenged the Mulda Faith Council to consider what our piece of peace was to be for the coming year. In January, we surveyed attendees, and in February, we chose the issue of loneliness and isolation that is an epidemic with serious health consequences, both mental and physical. Little did we know at the time then that in the next month, the pandemic would make this a global and even more serious issue. As you have seen, our work has many branches. I will now try to show you a few of our activities and programs that have not already been mentioned. This past January, we received a grant from Compassion Games International which enabled us to support the City of Toledo and the University of Toledo Collaborative MLK Unity event, as well as two organizations that do extraordinary compassionate work, the Bridge Program at Monroe Street United Methodist Church and the Islamic Food Bank. For five years, we have observed World Interfaith Harmony Week during February 1st through 7th with a clergy faith leader breakfast. At the breakfast, we have shared food and ideas about critical issues in the community. We have had family picnics for many years. In 2018 and 2019, the attendance grew to over 100 
at the Khan Pavilion at Islamic Center of Greater Toledo. We provide grill foods, appetizers, beverages, and tableware. Guests bring potluck foods. There are games for all ages, crafts and faith painting, and good fellowship for all. This year, of course, we couldn't do it because of the pandemic. The multi-faith men's group led by Joe Moran has been meeting for about 12 years monthly at various community locations. They have monthly discussions which center around how members respond to life situations and the big life questions from their respective faith traditions. The men also do at least quarterly service projects at St. Paul's Community Center and they also volunteer for Food for Thought and Salem Lutheran Church Outreach. A new but brilliant initiative called the Repair Cafe has gained collaborative momentum but has been postponed due to COVID. The initiative was started by John Crockmolly with the Sylvania Baha'is and Park Church Multifaith Council is also a co-sponsor and the Toledo Public Libraries have helped. This initiative is a wonderful way to respond to our throwaway society. The Multifaith Women's Group has been meeting for several years under the leadership of Barb Crockmolly and Joyce Moran. They have discussions for some of their meetings, but they also have food and art demonstrations they do service projects at La Posada, at Food for Thought. They serve holiday meals at Salem Lutheran Church. They have a Dining for Women chapter, which supports women's initiatives globally. And they do education, such as book discussions and field trips. Both the men's and women's groups have become solid parts of our overall programming. They often collaborate on service projects and collections. These collections were of service during our pandemic. They collected supplies for Salem Lutheran Church community service. They collected school supplies, including homemade masks or children's services. The Multifaith Council has done various youth projects through the years. The current youth discussion groups are primarily with international students and Toledo Public School students. We would really like to do more youth projects again, and we would welcome ideas and volunteers for this initiative. Education has always been a primary strand of the Mola Faith Council. We have held well over 100 sessions of various types. We've held discussions, panels, dialogues, forums. We've had several book club discussions. We have invited local speakers and speakers from across the nation. And we've premiered several films on interfaith issues. The Multifaith Council serves as a resource for many local service events. We have been longtime supporters of the Interfaith Blood Drive, the oldest and longest standing interfaith blood drive in the country. Devorah Shulamit has been the tireless supporter of this drive. She even held it during this pandemic under very trying circumstances. Hopefully, if we still are in a bit of a shutdown from the pandemic, we will be able to include at least a Zoom musical celebration of life because those have always been a very nice conclusion of the Interfaith Blood Drive. We have developed an urgent solidarity response team because unfortunately the number of hate incidents and hate crimes has risen dramatically. The purpose of the team is to develop responses to these incidents. The responses may be letters to media or they may be community vigils. This year it has also been used as a link to faith organizations to distribute COVID data. 
The council has been very active during the pandemic, even though some of our larger activities have needed to change. We provide email marketing for any organizations that are providing activities of a multi-faith or interfaith nature. We were asked in March to be a liaison between Lucas County and the faith leaders to provide COVID stats, first on a daily basis and now once a week. We have offered several free Zoom trainings. We have safe online events and we've even created a YouTube channel. Because we needed to cancel the 19th annual banquet due to the pandemic, we will replace it with a webinar on the subject of how to build a compassionate community during a pandemic. During the webinar, we will have a formal presentation of the 2020 Heroes of Compassion. We have gathered a panel of organizations that represent populations which are particularly isolated because of stigma. The panel will include representatives from the Ability Center, the Area Office on Aging, NAMI for Mental Health Issues, NOS, the Syringe Program for Opioid Issues, and Prison Reform and Prison Reentry. Following the panel, we will have a breakout room brainstorming about how faith groups can help alleviate isolation and build community during a pandemic. We have been holding universal worship services in Toledo for about three years. The services include readings and music on a theme from seven to nine diverse faith traditions. We are worshiping together, but each in our own way. The services are led by me, Judy Lee Troutman, and Lorraine Carpenter, who arranges the music. Because of the pandemic, we've had to meet on Zoom, but there is a silver lining. Although we miss meeting in diverse faith spaces, and we miss being physically together, on Zoom, we have had, for the five months, well over 2,000 views. This means that we're reaching a much broader audience and meeting a need. I'm a certified leader of the Dances of Universal Peace. I've been leading a group in Ann Arbor for about 12 years and circles in Toledo for several years. We have started to offer the dances on Zoom, which is pretty challenging, but it is a way for us to keep connected. After we do the dances together on First Fridays, I put samples of the dances on YouTube so that the dancers may use them for review or for their personal meditation. We could not do all that we do without partners and collaboration. These are just a few of our connections and collaborations. You may find more information about our organization and about our activities on our website and on our Facebook page.